have your Bibles, I want you to go with me today. I want to go to, um, I'm, I'm going to deal with a little something here today. Uh, I want to go real quick to Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. We've been talking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom within, and even dealing with this kingdom series, we want to make sure you know we're hearing a lot about the kingdom of God. Jesus, when he came, he preached the kingdom. He preached the keys of the kingdom. He preached the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is like a man such and such or like this, that, or the other. And so one of the things we got to understand is in order to live by the kingdom, we got to understand the kingdom. The kingdom by just its basic definition is God's way of doing, how he does, his method of operation. And so we begin to learn how does God function? How does he flow? And so I want to really be a stickler for the word. I'm going to start here and I'm going to stick with the scripture um, and, and whatever hit hits. Uh, but I don't want to rush this. I want to sow it into your spirit. I want you to understand the power of God. I want you to understand the power of you all as in, you and I as individuals, as kingdom citizens, and the collective power that we have to transform and to change lives and to change environments, to change culture. And so we want to talk about this today. Now, I'm going to deal a little today about the word of the kingdom, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about angel power today. I want to talk to you about the power of angelic forces that are at our disposal to assist us and to help us in accomplishing and achieving what it is God created and called for us to do. So if you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So we're going to go to Matthew's Gospel 13. Um, and when you have it, say, I'm in the house. Okay, I got one. Amen. Amen. If you don't, just say, help me, Jesus. Help him. Help him, Lord. Help him. Help him, Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to read the book of Matthew chapter 13. Now, I'm... I'm going to just go. I'm, 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 man, I'm stirred up. That was awesome worship. Awesome worship. Awesome worship. Praise God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now watch this. The book of Matthew 13. The book of Matthew 13. Verse 1. one verse, I'm, I'm going to kind of go 1 through 23, but I want to kind of hit some things here. And it says, the same day Jesus went out... Uh, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. If you have ears to hear, let them hear. So in other words, tune your ear in to hear what you need to hear today. Because what God wants to do is, listen, when, when, when you come with an expectation, God will meet your expectation. And I want you to pull and I want you to draw. And it says here, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He, said, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them that is not given. Um, and but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore, I, I watch this, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not. And hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Let me just pause right here and begin to say, okay, if you don't understand seeing they see not or hearing they hear not, okay, you can hear something but don't comprehend it or understand it. And so if you don't comprehend it or understand it, you can't, you can't walk into it. And so if you don't have it, you won't have it. You, you hear what I'm saying? So that's why it's important for you to understand this so that if you understand it, more is going to come. And so now this is why it's important. Now I'm going to keep reading because you'll see what I'm going to say in a second. And he says here, what verse am I in? 14. And he says, and in them 
uh, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, so Isaiah, um, which saith, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross. And see, this he's given an understanding now as to why you can't hear. It, it's hard to hear when your heart is hard. It's hard to hear when you're offended. It's hard to hear when you don't even want to hear. Okay? So I can be talking, but it's like my dad said this thing, just like a dull knife that just ain't cutting, talking loud and saying nothing. And so it, 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 sometimes you got to be, you, you, you want to have the attitude of, okay, God, I want to hear. I want to receive. I want to understand so that your heart can be open for the revelation God wants to get you. Okay? Now, I want you to just say this real quick. Say, Lord, I want to hear. I want, I want, you, to, I want you to really be like, okay, God, I'm, I'm really, I want to hear what you have for me. I don't want to block the revelation, even if it hurts in the beginning. Even if it's a thing where my flesh doesn't like it, I know I need to hear. I want to hear what I need to hear. Okay? Because if I hear what I need to hear, I'm going to grow from it. Okay? And so because this people's um, heart is wax gross, their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes, um, they have closed, least at any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted. And I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things. They desired to see those things. Now watch this. He says, for verily I say unto you that many prophets, verse 17, and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. So he's going through all of this. And he's saying, OK, I want to I want to share something with you. Now, I'm going to open up your eyes to the revelation of what I just explained to you. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. Now, in the book of Mark four, he talked about if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand any of the parables. So you got to understand this process. You got to understand how I'm functioning. He says this. Now, in the book of Mark, it says, when the word is sown, then cometh the wicked one and steals that word away. And in other words, it can make it look like at any time he can just come and snatch it away from you. But here we see that he cannot do this when you have understanding of it. This is why in all that getting, get what? Understanding. You got to understand the word. Not just get excited about it, but you got to understand because once you understand it, he can never take it away from you. So it's sown in your heart. Say this, say, I have understanding. So this is why it's important. This is why part of my regular prayer time, I pray, Father, I thank you that the eyes of my understanding are being enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 16 through 23, Paul prayed this prayer. And so I begin to pray this prayer. And as I begin to pray this prayer, that's when more revelation begin to show up because I'm praying for revelation. I'm praying for my eyes to be open to see. I'm praying for excellent comprehension. So that when I hear things, see, now to me, it almost flows in the level of, to me, common sense. But it's the revelation of God, the wisdom of God that's in operation. And watch this, because I've been praying this for years now. So why I should expect to see. Because see, sometimes you praying for stuff and watch this. When it starts manifesting, you may not even recognize it because in the way it's manifesting to you, God is opening up your eyes to see. And watch this. This is why the Bible says in 1 John 5 that you have an, an unction of the Holy One. Um, ver, um, 520, it says, but you have an unction of the Holy One and you know all things. Then in verse 27 says, but that anointing that abideth in you teacheth you all things and you have not need that any man teach you, but God's spirit will teach you. Does that mean we don't need teachers in the body of Christ? No, he says he's already set these ministry gifts in place for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ. 
But watch this. The Holy Ghost in you will even confirm when you hear something because the spirit watches you try the spirit by the spirit and there'll be something that comes out of my mouth. But then it ignites something within you because now the same Holy Ghost that's flowing out of me lives and abides in you. And you can now agree, say, even as you're trying to understand and comprehend with your head in your heart, you know this is right. So, God, I thank you now that my mind begins to match up what's already in my spirit. All right. And so now watch this. Let's keep going. And then he says, but he that re verse 20, I'll, I'll go there. Um, but he that receiveth the seed and stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and Anan with joy receiveth it. This is where a lot of people are. You hear the word, you get excited about it. Yet hath he not rooted himself, but doeth for or endures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. Persecution, he's given a reason why the tribulation and the persecution is trying to come, is coming to try to steal the word that was sown in your heart. It ain't about you. It's about the seed that's been deposited in you so that, watch this, if he can snatch that word out, it'll never come to pass and you'll never see the fruitfulness or the productivity and the hope deferred makes the heart sick. And if your heart is sick, then all of a sudden now your strength is small. And watch this, in the day of adversity, if your strength is small or if you succumb to that thing, your strength is small and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you. Why? That my joy might remain in you. And so if my joy is in you, your strength is in, encouraged in the increase. And if your strength is encouraged, you can now resist in the day of adversity. Why? Because you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So it ain't our might, it's his might in us. So we can't do this by ourselves. We have the spirit of might and the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit himself, and we have the word of truth, the word of God, and the word and the spirit agree. So watch this. Listen, you got to have the word and the spirit. The Holy Spirit will breathe. This is how the kingdom works. God says, not only have I given you my word, but I've given you the one who will decode and transcribe the word for you so that you will understand everything you need to know. The Holy Ghost is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, you, you, everything is in you. I'm telling you. No matter what's happened, I'm telling y'all, as I, as I stand up here, when we come in prayer and I'm standing up here, I, my mind goes into the spirit and I start seeing stuff. And it's like the creativity of God, the wisdom of God, everything that's needed that pertains to life and godliness has been given unto us. Now, let's, let's keep going. He says, now, he says, persecution arises, tribulation. Persecution arises because of the word. And by and by, he is offended. That's how Satan can get you. If he can get you offended or off-ended. If he can get you off, he gets you offended. Now that word can't grow. It's a weed that comes up that chokes the word. And now what God is speaking will never come to pass. Why? Because you offended. This is why our love walk is so important. We can't be easily offended. We can't be touchy. We can't be afraid. We can't take no account of a suffered wrong. Why? I got to guard my heart for out of it flows the issues, the forces of life. So if I get offended, it short circuits the power that can flow out of me. I refuse to be offended. I want you to begin to, whether you're online or in person, I want you to begin to declare, I refuse to be offended. I refuse to be offended. I refuse to be offended. Man, I can't tell you the number of people that's been offended because of something that's been said. I done said something, preached something. Sometimes the Holy Ghost will reveal something and they swear up and down. Somebody told me about something. That I, ain't, listen, I ain't had a clue about it. It was just the fact that the Holy Ghost brought it up and it convicted you and now all of a sudden your flesh rose up and you allowed the flesh to override the work of the Holy Spirit in you and so now you got offended and got away from your progress, got away from your development. Why? Because the very place you needed to be in, God got you offended in. I mean, Satan got you offended in so you can get out the atmosphere and get away from your development because the very person, that watch this, that was designed and called to help you develop, that's the one Satan will cause you to be offended by the most. Why? 
I, see, I can say this. I can say this boldly. Why? Because as a preacher, I'm anointed for your deliverance. So if I'm a carrier of your help, if I'm your enemy, I'm going to try to come and get you off ended with the person that's been called to help you. Man. See, you got to understand how the enemy works. Now watch this. Verse 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Because that, that's a dangerous thing because we've been created to be fruitful. That was one of the promises in Genesis. That was part of that blessing. I want you to be fruitful. And he gives you the description of what will cause you to be unfruitful. See, you, you're carrying too much care. You're carrying too much care. And because you're carrying so much care, it's causing that word to be unfruitful. You too busy worrying about everything instead of focusing on the main thing. He told Martha, Jesus said, Martha, Martha, why you come about with so much? Mary have chosen that good part. She was sitting at his feet. Martha was in there serving tables and she got hot. Why are you, how come you ain't getting no Mary? I'm in here working. And she out there sitting at your feet. He's like, why are you tripping, girl? Why are you tripping? And it's like modern day vernacular. He said, okay, you tripping? She's chosen the good part. First things first. Come sit at my feet. Come feed off of me. And out of that now, sir. See, you won't wear out in your servanthood if you keep your fire burning. I used to sing this song years ago. I got it from uh, Bishop Carlton Pearson. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Burning with the Holy Ghost. See, when, when, you stay, when you stay fired up, it's hard for you to wear out. Uh, Apostle Fred Price, I remember we was in a ministers and leaders conference many years ago, and he talked about even um, some, some tips and pointers for ministers of the gospel. And he said, you won't burn out if you do these things. You know, everybody else, it's hard. It's time. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He said, the way of the transgressor is hard. It's only hard when you don't do it the way he say do it. It becomes easier when you realize it ain't about you anyway. It ain't about me. I'm not, I, listen, if I've been declaring that I'm going to receive these things without stress, struggle, or strain, I need to begin to believe and say, okay, God, whether they grant the yes or the no, it ain't on me anyway. I believe you. Now, whatever you got to do to make this thing happen, I ain't losing no sleep over. If they fire me, you give me another one. You got me that one, you'll give me a better one. If they kick me out the house, you'll create another one for me to get into. Listen, you the same God that sits high and looks low. You the same God that created the trees that created the house. So I don't care whatever, whatever you got to do, Jehovah. I'm going to say, calm down, boy. Come, Lord Jesus. Whatever you got to do. Because I trust God. You ain't got to worry about nobody. What? Lord Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. And it says, but he that receives seed, verse 23, into good ground, good ground. Somebody shout, I have good ground. Is he that hears the word, understands it, which also beareth fruit. You hear it, you understand it, and you produce it. Amen. That's what qualifies you as good ground. Do you hear it, understand it, but then walk it out? That's the question. That's the question. God says, I called you to be fruitful. I've called you to multiply. I've called you to replenish, I've called you to subdue, and I've called you to dominate. And now it's time to have dominion. It's time to dominate, Spirit of Fire. It's time to dominate, Body of Christ. It's time to dominate. So whatever we set out to do, now it's my job to give you the goal of what we're supposed to dominate. And now I'll lead the ministry and say, okay, this is what God said we're supposed to conquer. Now let's conquer it. 
And whatever it is God is calling you to conquer, conquer it. One person can make a difference. All it takes is one intercessor to stand in the gap. All it takes is one. You got, listen, one will put a thousand to flight. Yes, two will put 10,000 to flight. But you got to understand the power that you packing as the one. Even if it's just you, watch this. Listen, if I don't have a human agreeing with me, I got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You been, man, boy, Lord, I remember, man, this thing got me stirred up when the Lord told me in prayer before I did Thursday night's Bible study. He says, I want you to go set the world on fire. That thing hit my spirit. I was like, Lord Jesus. I said, that's why you gave me this name. I didn't come up with this thing. I was driving. All I heard was spirit of fire, spirit of fire fellowship. And whenever I would tell people, it's like, ooh, I like that name. Ooh. And I tell them the vision. As we manifest the love of God through act of goodness and kindness, our goal is to teach people their authority, rights, and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, pursuing their purpose, igniting a passion and fire for the kingdom of God, revealing to the world the true sons and daughters of God, and blazing with his glory. God's manifested goodness ought to be seen on your life. Why? Because you done got connected with a vision that done set you on fire. You, okay, hold oh Lord Jesus. See, when that fire show up, you listen, you will see, you will see somebody that's hurting. And all of a sudden, there should be a compassion that rises up in you that wants to go lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It's like, God, I done read about it long enough. I got to see this thing now. I don't know about y'all. It's like, it's time. I done, I've seen legs grow out. Because I just stepped out and did it. I just followed the example that was set before me. It was that simple. I believed it and I did it and I saw it. Okay, okay, okay. Man, I'm just passionate. I just, I, I can't, I, I'm apologetic to me. This is me. This is how I roll. This is what I do. So, <laughs> and I'm telling you now, God said he wants you to have understanding. He wants you to be equipped. He wants you to be, see, I, I like the, the balance of the two. Listen, to be intellectual is to be spiritual just as well. God, he's anointed your mind as well as your body. He wants you stirred up. He wants you to think like he thinks. He wants you to believe like he believes. You are a creative force in this earth. You are a creative being. Don't you know, mama, when you speak over your body, it has to align itself with the word of God? Because God's nature abides in you. God's nature. Yeah, even though the outward man perisheth, the inward man is being renewed day by day, day by day, strengthened with might by his spirit in your inward man. I'm telling you, your mind is sharp, alert, and attentive. I'm telling you like this. Listen, it's, listen, I'm, man, okay, I'm about to say something. Lord Jesus, listen, when we transfer from this life to the next, we're going to go forth ruling and reigning. We should be dominating to the point that we tell Jesus, hold up, Lord. You ain't got to come now. We're doing too much work on this planet. You can hold on for just a second. We are manifesting your goodness right here now. We ain't got to wait to heaven for it to be all good. It's all good now in Jesus. Now, come on, man. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory, man, glory. Now, I want, I want to read something. Matthew 24, 14. Listen, 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 listen. It's time for you to bring forth. He said some 30, some 60, some 100. It's time to, listen, we're going for 100 fold. Amen. I take that. We're going for 100 fold. <laughs> we want the best. See, in verse 24, even says here in, in Matthew 13, 24, he says another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Listen, you got to understand when we understand how things work. It's easier. It's easier to do it is easier to receive it. But it's also easier to recognize moments that show up. Divine ignited moments. Um, part of me just want to say some stuff, but some stuff I got to say, behind, you know. 
that you got to say in private sessions and meetings. <laughs> but part of me is like, it's like when God called us to this thing, he says, what we're going to begin to do is we're going to begin, and he said he gave us the word. I know it was the Lord that said it. I know it was the Lord. I don't doubt it one bit. The strategies, structures, and the systems, and the structures and the strategies and the things that we always knew to do, he says, just start doing. If you could go back and talk to your younger self, what would you tell them? Or if you can come out of yourself and sit yourself in front of you, what counsel would you give you? And you will realize the answer already there. The counsel you would sit and give somebody else who walking in fear. Why don't you use it for yourself? Amen. The counsel that you would give somebody as to how to handle their money. You've been in sessions. You done marked your book. You done screamed money coming. You done sown. You done tired. You've given. Watch this. You looked at investments. You've done all these things. What would you tell yourself? Because you know you've been thinking about it. The wisdom is in you. Thank you. This, this is what I'm saying. Now watch this. Verse, let's go to Matthew 24 real quick, real quick. Okay. Matthew 24, 14. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. You are hearing this message go now around the world. I believe we're closer to the return of Christ than some people may think. But God still says, I don't, I'm not going to come back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Now, I don't want to get too much into this because these are just private thoughts that I have sometimes when I read these things. Does that mean that each person is going to be flawless that's a part of the church? Doesn't mean, you know, sometimes you got to stop and think, what does that mean, Lord? What's the wrinkle that you need to get out? What's the thing? Um, okay, I, I know he's leading me somewhere to say this. I, this just popped in my head. I'm wearing this jacket, and I was about not to wear the jacket because it had a bunch of wrinkles in it. And it was going to take me too long to try to iron, and I put a cloth over it and tried to iron out some of the wrinkles. And it just because of the type of material it is, it was like, it just wasn't doing it. I'm like, ah, I really wanted to wear it, but I it was like, man, I ain't got time to be doing all of this. And then all of a sudden, I just said, I know what I can do. I know I can throw it in the dryer just for a second, and I'll let it tumble dry until maybe I get back home and just have it for the next time. But when I went in there, I dried it, and the children saw me the other jacket I put on. They was like, well, how come you took the other one off? And it was like, well, because it was wrinkled. Well, was it that wrinkle, or could you still wear it? And, stuff? and so I went back. I just said, let me just go look in the dryer. And sure enough, when I poured it out, the wrinkles were gone. I mean, these were deep wrinkles. And I said, this thing came out quicker than I thought, because I put it in the dryer and turned up the heat. And when he started talking to me the other day about spirit of fire, part of that is the refiner's fire. To drive those things out that's been causing those wrinkles. And that's why you're sensing that God is turning up the heat in certain areas because he's trying to iron out some of the wrinkles that's been hindering you from receiving what he's been wanting you to have. And you've been crying about the fire when you should have been praising him in the midst of it. He said, because it was me to get out of you. See, the fire is turned up, and this is why people are getting stirred up, and you're hearing things about the kingdom. You're hearing things about the fear of God, the awe of God. All of a sudden, because now, watch this, because now you're seeing this balance of the grace and the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the fear of the Lord. And watch this, because we know grace ain't a license to sin, but some took it as that. Because they, watch this, hearing they understood not. 
So then they open up themselves to things. And so God said, wait a minute, y'all, y'all tripping now. Just like Paul had to do with the church at Corinth. Wait a minute. Now this stuff being named among you shouldn't even be named among you. You got, oh, it's time to tighten up because judgment begins in the house of God, but it don't end here. He says, I'm getting you, I'm getting the wrinkles out. I'm getting you wrinkle free in areas so that now you can receive and handle what I'm bringing you into. You better get ready because what God has been doing for the first quarter of this year is getting you prepared for the rest of this year. You better get ready now because he's getting you positioned for something that he's getting ready to release to you. He told you to get your structure right. He told you to get your house in order. And he's had some of you have been sitting and hearing God. You've been forced to hear him now. And you've been trying to figure out, God, what in the heck is going on? It's been an attack of the enemy, but what it's caused is caused you to have a dependency on him that you never had before. And so now you won't have to trust him like you never trusted him before. And now, because sometimes he'll shut some doors. Every shut door ain't the enemy. When he said, trust me, trust me. What do you do when they shut down the overtime that you've been depending on? Now you got to trust me. What happens when the door closes? Now you got to trust me. I told you to trust me a year ago. And you've been praying, not realizing that the Holy Ghost is praying for you, through you, according to the perfect will of God. And watch this, you didn't understand the tongues you was talking. And so now you were talking things through yourself about you, not knowing that the hardship, the suffering you were going to have to go through to get the wrinkles out of you. Because I turned up the heat. And when you come out this time, when you go through the refiner's fire, you coming out as pure gold. Because stuff, watch this. Some of you have experienced this. It's stuff that you were succumbing to so easy, but now there's been a divine resistance that's been rising up in you. That even when Satan's been attacking you, there's something that's rising. The Holy Ghost in you has been coming up against that thing. Because it's one rough shot over your life for too long. And you've been praying. And God has been waking up intercessors. And they've been praying for you. And there's been the spirit of fire. Put a, thank God, Lord Jesus. He, listen, a hedge of protection around you. I'm telling you, God loves you. And you ain't died because God said not yet. He says, I will not allow you to be able to be tempted above your ability to resist it. He said, you are in my will. And he says, because you're in my will, until you finish what I called you to do, you ain't going nowhere. You better hear what I'm telling you now. Man, Jesus. Uh-huh. 1 Corinthians 4 20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You've been talking it, but now it's demonstration time. It's demonstration time. It's demonstration time. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get up and walk. See, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say some bold stuff. I'm going to say some stuff that <laughs> if all of us activate. I used to look at this cartoon back in the day. I don't know if some of y'all remember it called Super Friends. And they had the Wonder Twin. And they came into a company, you know, and before they begin to activate their power, where they said Wonder Twin powers activate. And so what God is saying, you won't have to have the power twins, faith and patience. That when those begin to come together, you're going to begin to see things begin to manifest because God says, I'm strengthening you with might by my spirit to endure the change and the transformation that you're going through. You, you, you're, going to have to, you're going to have to hear me. When you're willing to stand forever, you won't have to stand very long. You, you, you need to hear that. <laughs> when you're willing to stand forever, you won't have to stay in long. Because why? Say no. Oh, God knows. Oh, they fixed on this. They believe this. 
He's just trying to get your faith built up. He's training you for eternity. I got this from headquarters. He's training you for eternity. You're too limited in your thinking. We're going we to help him. We'll continue to help our Lord Jehovah in the creation process. Some of y'all, I know, some of y'all, I, I, I'm seeing too much into the, <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all got to work with me, got to work with me. He, he says, I'm training you, not just for here, because if you don't learn it here, you will have to learn it there. You're going to have to learn it. And there'll be those, the scripture even talks about those that have robes of righteousness. There are things that you're going to have to learn on the other side. You're going to realize how much of a reflection earth is of heaven. Earth is the Lord's taste. I'm ready for more. I don't know about y'all. I, I don't get as excited about some other stuff. It's like, I don't learn that. I, I won't meet. Uh, I'm past babyhood stage. And I got to get people past babyhood stage. You got to get ready. Because once you understand who you are, you're going to walk in such a level of power and confidence and authority, the anointing is going to ooze off of you. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll walk in this power. You'll walk in this authority. You'll walk in this anointing. You're hungry for it. But there are many others who are. There are many others that are crying out in dark places that I've called you to go and to snatch them out of darkness. For fear not, for Satan and his cohorts are afraid of you. They're afraid of those that rise up in their authority and power. Mm Mm-hmm. And while others are looking for the pristine and others are looking for those that are polished, I'm going to take you to those that people have overlooked. And you're going to see the glory come out of them. Because they're going to be hungry. And I can use them. No, I'm telling you. We're called to go after principalities and power. territorial devils in regions. We're to go in with the power of light and turn it into the Garden of Eden. We're to acquire properties that are dilapidated and turn them around for God's glory that men will see. For I said, arise and shine for my light has come and I'll take you to the ruined places and I'll cause you to build up the ruined places. It's taking place all over. I just heard testimony. I got to give him a big shout out. My man, Mike Todd, he talked about their church. They just acquired a property for their media studio. But it, even in the clause in the deed, it said that it should not be sold. It would not be sold to an African-American. Oh, yeah, it was still in the laws. And look who acquired it. He knew God called him to that area. See, that's what I'm, I'll say, that's what I'm talking about. Doggone it, that's what I'm talking about. You better hear me. You better hear me. I was just had the opportunity to be in a room the other week with some leaders. I didn't even realize the people I was in the room with, people from the governor's office, people from different, people in wealth management, people. I thought it was just preachers was going to be at this meeting, leadership training. And then they started introducing themselves. And I just started saying, okay, God, man, why you got me here? Because I, th- I know I've been praying to go into new rooms. Amen. And you interact with people. And you pick up things about people. It's like, oh, yeah. See, part of your character is seeing how you treat people that you think can't do anything for you. 
Sometimes I feel like, let's see, I, I don't think more highly than I ought to think, but you're still supposed to think highly, but still honor God for what he's given you, but know what you're working with. Know that the greater one's in you so that you don't be intimidated. I like that, yep, confident humility, I like that, yep. See, false humility is you having a lower image of yourself than what God said. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 5, in my speech and my preaching, were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is why Christianity wasn't intended to be dictated, but demonstrated. In every sphere of influence. I'll say that I got to get it out. I got to get it out. I got to get it. I, I speak. I feel like when I speak it, it's something that's going on. Man, oh, Jesus, your, your, your name going in the rooms that you ain't even in yet. Your name will precede you when you begin to call out your name. John Hannah was just talking about this. He was preaching, he was preaching um, at a church, and he talked about calling out your name. He was led to do that in prayer with his people. And all of a sudden, he got a call from Africa from a preacher that said, I'm looking for John Hanna. He was invited, no, he was invited to the church. He went to the church. He met the pastor. The pastor was like, he came in the room. He said, I just wanted to meet you and see you. You know, he was thinking, what you mean to meet me and see you? You ain't never seen me before? It's almost like, why are you inviting me if you don't know me? He said, I was in prayer and I kept hearing the name John Hanna, John Hanna, John Hanna. But he was talking about, preaching about declaring your name in the atmosphere and people gonna hear your name. And he said he called a person who was an African in America, and it happened to be the person who used to live across the street from him. Wow. It says, do you know a person by the name of John Henry? He said, yeah. And he ended up inviting him. And somebody had prophesied to him years before that, you're, gonna, you're supposed to be in Africa preaching. The thing is this, there are spiritual laws that we haven't even acknowledged, and if you don't acknowledge and understand it, you won't walk in it. This is why too, oh man, my time, goodness. I, if I got time, I'll get to it, but I, I probably won't get to it today, maybe too much. This is why you gotta understand the angel power you have at work. You have heavenly assistance. We all have heavenly assistance, unseen forces that are ready to go to work for you. But how, watch this. The Bible talks about innumerable angels. You see just the number, and remember a third of them went, fell with Satan. We also hear about our guardian angels, those that have been assigned. But watch this. The Bible, from I haven't seen it even in my studies dealing with angels, it never says that all of the angels that are created have been distributed evenly. They will go to work for whoever puts them to work. See, that's why even in my own time, I pray and I'll call on angels and I'll dispatch them to the north, the south, the east, and the west. I'll dispatch warring angels. Michael is a warring angel. See, <laughs> see, I, I know we don't talk about it too much. Remember, remember, was it Gabriel came when Daniel was in prayer and fasting for 21 days? And he said this, he says, from the first day that you set your heart to understand, he says, I came for your words. He says, but the prince of Persia, a principality, was withholding me 21 days, and now I am come. See, some people just set out to pray. We do a bunch of 21-day fast. I ain't against you 21-day fast, but he didn't set out to pray 21 days. It just took 21 days for it to show up. 
There's nothing wrong with it. You want practice. I'm, I'm not mad at it. That's, that's a cool practice to have, but I don't want you to do it out of religiosity. <sighs> Is it, you about to go into another realm of the spirit. You, 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 to decree things and to see them established with confidence. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Fervency is intensity, but it doesn't necessarily mean loudness. You, you know what I'm saying? I can be fervent intense about what I'm believing for. And what Satan would try to do is try to suck your energy so that you'll reduce your fervency. Begin to be intentional with your words. I feel like I prompted to say this. I was going to say, says the Lord, but be, be, be intentional about what you speak. Be skilled in what you declare. Get the image of what you're believing for in your mind. Build the blueprint and begin to speak according to the pattern that you see. As you renew your mind and, and, and meditate on the word, it'll begin to shift and transform how you think. And then all of a sudden, God will begin to tell you he'll take you beyond the normal parameters of your thought. When God says build locally, think globally, think global, think global, think global, build local, think global. What does that mean, Lord? Give me all of the possibilities of that. When he says I've called you to do outreach, that doesn't just mean local. It can be global. It can be through media. It can be through this. It can be through that. Don't limit the Holy One of Israel. Get ready, y'all. I'm telling you. See, I'm, I'm, pardon me. Can, can, can y'all can handle just a little bit more? I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to close out. I'm getting ready to close out. Because sometimes I can sense a feel in the spirit. It's like, okay, you're giving them a lot. Let them chew on it. But y'all ready? Yes. He's bringing those with an ear to hear. Yes. I can't be like everybody else. You go to the church, grow seminars, and all those things. You hear all these things. But sometimes I'm like, some of y'all people still low dwellers. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me keep my mouth shut. Let me keep my mouth shut. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet lips increase learning. Sweet lips, sweet lips. When you eat meat, you can't keep going back to cereal. It don't feed you the same. Don't feed you the same. There's nothing against. Everybody has their role to play. So hear me when I say this. Every person has their role. You have some people who are elementary school teachers. There's some people who are middle school teachers. And then high school teachers. And then you got professors in universities. Each one is important. But when you graduate, one plus one is two. Then you go on to algebra, geometry, trigonometry, statistics, and all that stuff, there are levels to this. What my assignment is, is to get you to walk in the authority of it, to get you flowing. And I'm like, God, okay. I said, Lord, this is good that I'm going to preach this to them. I want to demonstrate it. I want this demonstrated. I want this demonstrated. Now, uh, how I say that? I don't want to be what you call them spooky pookies either. It's everything you dumb deep with stuff. What I mean by dumb deep is off the pages. You find no precedence for it. But there's some things because this Bible is based off of the redemption. The Bible is a book of redemption and authority. We call it basic instructions before leaving earth. 
But there are things afterwards that's not in here that you'll see later on. Hear me. Hear me when I say, you got to get, you get really, when you start saying stuff like, you, I'm not saying you don't use this. This is what we live by. This is what he's given us. But there are things in this scripture your eyes have not seen yet. And you've been looking and reading past it for years. And when it's time for you to see it, your eyes will be open. Oh, there are many things. Many things. Many things. This is why I love foundation, because foundation gets you prepared to receive greatness. Become skilled in what you do know. Discipline in what you do know. Amen. 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 Let me give you, I'm going to give you a quick rule of thumb. I don't know why I'm just saying this now. I'm going to go ahead and say it since I'm here. Maybe to help tie up some stuff. Do what you know to do in the practical, but understand the spiritual forces that are at work for you, the spiritual laws. There are natural laws and spiritual laws. Natural laws like the law of gravity. What goes up must come down. Gravity works for everybody. It's a law that is no respect of persons. The law is an an established principle that works for anybody that gets involved. Until another law comes into play that overrides it, the law of lift and thrust. That's how planes fly. That's how rockets go up. There are laws that work together, but God will begin to give you the wisdom to know how to apply every principle and law that you've ever learned. You got to hear me. I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this. Even as you begin to pray, there are times where, see, this is why you got to be able to handle it. God will reveal things to you as you're able to handle it. Hearing you hear not, seeing you see not. Get ready for things that your eyes need to see for whatever thing it is you're dealing with that you never thought of before, but it's been there the whole time. And once you find the seed, it's like common sense. It's like, of course. Oh man, of course, it's obvious. Yeah, it's obvious now because the scales have been removed. Blinded eyes are open. Okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is what he was, yeah, I was going to say before. This is why system strategies and structures are so important. You can have great anointing, but raggedy systems, and your anointing will never impact the lives it's supposed to impact because the improper structure systems and strategies are not in place. That's why he told me that for this, why it was for this ministry. Great anointing, great strategy and structure. The stronger the anointing, the stronger the structure needs to be. Write the vision, make it plain so those that read it can run with it. People need to read it. But it has to be understandable. What are you about? Then they'll recognize I'm supposed to connect. Those that connect will. Those that don't won't. So don't lose no sleep over either one. He who has ears to hear, my voice is assigned to certain ears. And I got to be cool with that. Everybody, I ain't everybody's cup of tea. And I can't walk in inferiority and insecurity because then I'll shut down who I really am. Trying to fit another model, trying to say, okay, well, you do this, so let me go ahead and do this. And you do this, so let me go ahead and do this. And losing me the whole time. And then the ones who call to me get frustrated because now I dumb down who I am to try to fit a model that God didn't mold me to be. You hear me? Mm Mm-mm. Don't you do that. Don't you dumb down your anointing. You are an original. Just be confident. This is why some of y'all have gone through seasons of isolation. You needed to learn how to be alone. So that now you won't be ruled by the opinions of people. That's why you are alone. So now you're free to do what I tell you to do. So now I can bring people in that I need to bring in and you're not held captive by their opinions. Is 
It's growth time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your faithfulness. You are just God. There's none like unto you. Somebody online, I just, I speak life over you. I speak strength over you. I speak wisdom and peace over you. Some of you have been taking notes. Some of you have been hearing confirmation, confirming words in your spirit. Whatever it is you needed to hear, you heard today. God is strengthening you. He's equipping you. He's deploying you. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. Now, we pray for those that may be under the sound of my voice that have never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For those that are out there, listen, there is a literal heaven to gain and a hell to shun. God did not create hell for man. He created for Satan and his angels that followed him in rebellion against God. Jesus came with a redemptive plan to redeem the world and to reconcile the world back to God. Christ died for you. He shed his blood for you. God raised him for the de- from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of the Father now, forever making intercession for us. But all you have to do is believe what he did, accept what he did, and confess what he did. The Bible declares that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Not just making him Savior, but then you're going to have to make him Lord. Receiving his teachings understanding how his kingdom functions and works. That's what we're here as the church for. Five-fold ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to help train and to develop you as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept Jesus today. It's the best decision that you'll ever make. He also has promised you the gift of the Holy Spirit to abide in you. The Holy Spirit is here in the earth with us today. He came on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter 2. It talks about that the, the Holy Spirit, he invaded the atmosphere. There was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. And he filled the house where all of them were sitting. There were cloven tongues like as a fire, fire. And they filled every single person in that upper room, 120. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as God gave them, as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance. Now watch this. Afterwards, the Bible, Jesus says, you shall receive the Holy Spirit, but then, watch this, he'll cause you to be a witness. He'll empower you to be an effective witness for the Lord. I like to call it the, the dual working of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. The Spirit within is to help you develop your character and strengthen you inwardly, but then he comes upon you for service, to equip you with gifts, talents, and abilities to now serve the kingdom of God, to serve God's agenda in the earth, to serve mankind. Accept Jesus today. Walk in the fullness of who God called you to be. Some of you have been struggling with purpose. This is your time. This this was destined by God. Some of you received an invitation just to log on in the sea. I want you to receive Jesus now. It's real simple. I just want you to, to, to pray this simple prayer with me. I want you to say this, and along with everybody else here in person and, in, um, and online, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I give my life to you. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again, and I have eternal life. Hey, that's it. That's it. You're born again. Now I want you to say this. Say, Holy Spirit. I receive you now. I allow you to come to live in me, to dwell in me, to strengthen me, to empower me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm doing this for a reason. I want you now, we don't have you here in person. Normally, we'll have somebody that'll minister to you. 
And I know everybody in person here, I know they, they, they're all good, spirit-filled, understanding the word and the work of the Lord. But I want you to do this. For those that have just gotten born again, let us know. Do we have a number they can text us at or just do the information like we normally? We can do the, um, it's coming up on your screen as an email that you can send us, um, that you can email us at connect at spiritoffire.us. Or you can also send us a DM through our social media platform. If you desire for us to learn more about this walk with the Lord and how um, to walk out your faith, we want to help you, we want to assist you in doing so. Um, you can also, for those that may not even be on there, you can go to our YouTube channel. You can go ahead and click subscribe and hit the notifications button so that you can receive all of the content that's on there. We're going to be uploading more content <clears throat> to assist you in your walk. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms because God has dealt with me about digital discipleship this year to help people, to help develop them just through just different means, um, different mediums to help disciple and train people in the walk of God. And so if that's you, we want to hear from you. We want to acknowledge you. And we'll have somebody from our Connect team get with you um, to help and to assist you with that. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap for anybody that's received what's online. Amen. All right. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to honor God in our giving. Uh, we like to call it Opportunity for Prosperity Time. And so uh, there's some information coming up on your screen. Um, and as you're doing that, today is also First Sunday. We're going to uh, have communion. So even while you're getting your offerings together, your tithes, offerings, and gifts of love, we want you to also um, go ahead and grab your elements because we're going to pray and we're going to get ready to partake of communion together. Um, there's information on your screen. There's a QR code you can scan, and uh, it'll take you to a secure page. And on that page, you can um, sow your tithes, offerings, gifts of love. Whatever God tells you to do, I want you to pray. And as God has called you, the spirit of generosity, let it, let it be there to, to, to guide, to lead you, excuse me, as to what you should sow and what you should give. Amen. Praise God. Will y'all get anything out of this today? Yes. Amen. Amen. And as you're doing that, for anybody here, if you need an envelope, um, I should be happy to assist. Actually, I need one this week. Today. I need one today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody say this. Say, for the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Let's say it again. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, as we are giving, I want us to do this as well. As I said, today is First Sunday, and we honor God with the communion table. Jesus said it like this. He says, as often as you do it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. He said, this is my body that was broken for you my blood that was shed for you. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, no taking away of sin. Jesus died. He was the final sin sacrifice, the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. The Bible calls him the second Adam. And so listen, he came to die to restore what was lost, damaged, and destroyed. So when you receive Christ, and we acknowledge this table, we're acknowledging divine healing because Jesus, when he was whipped with the cat of nine tails, or was it 39 stripes? Um, that he was beaten with, which was the maximum penalty. And there were even, there was a doctor's report that shared, and I don't, you know, this was a while ago, um, that there are 39 categories of diseases that all other diseases flow from. God knew this ahead of time. So in other words, when Jesus died for you, when he was beaten for you, the stripes that he took, this is why the Bible says, and with his stripes, you are healed. In Isaiah 53 and 5, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, and with his stripes, you were healed. So you can declare healing and watch this. This is putting you in remembrance of the fact that you are already healed. 
Say, I am healed. I am healed. And watch this. When you drink this juice, which represents the blood, is also the washing away of all your sin, the penalty that's attached to it. When God looks at us, he sees us through the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I wish I had an organ here with me right now. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Boy, Satan can't stand hearing about the blood. Ooh, Jesus. Man, I, I, I felt something right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we sanctify these elements for the purpose of communion, recognizing the, the body of our Lord that was tattered, torn, and beaten, but also raised in honor. The blood that was shed for the taking away of our sins. And Father, we thank you that we can come boldly to the throne of grace because of what Jesus has done. And we give you praise for it. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament or the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Well, let's stand to our feet. Um, and I want to give you the final benediction today. I want to bless you. I want to declare God's favor over you. I declare in the name of Jesus, I want you to receive this. Receive this word. I declare. Oh, you don't have to repeat. You don't have to repeat. Just re I just want you to receive. I want you to receive. Uh, I declare great favor on you. I declare open doors that no man can shut. I declare that God is raising up people to use their power, their resources, and their influence to assist you and to help you. I declare that your eyes will be open to see every possibility. I declare great faith and great favor on you. I pray that the gift of faith begin to manifest for you to supernaturally be able to believe for certain things. I declare the spirit of innovation and acceleration take place. That things will happen at a greater pace, but you're ready to handle the new rhythm for your life. I declare it now in the name of Jesus. I declare restoring and repairing of anything that's been lost, damaged, or destroyed. Thank you. Mm. May you not worry ever again about that loved one, about that situation. I declare that any time the enemy tries to come against you, that the Spirit of God will rise strong within you and remind you who you are and bring everything to your remembrance that's needed in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, we bless you. I declare growth over this ministry. I declare divine alignment. I declare order. I declare unity. I declare strength. I declare wealth. I declare power. That we walk in the love of God and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. I declare growth and expansion. I declare new buildings coming now. New facilities. New vehicles. New homes even. Wherever you are, whatever's been disrupting your peace, I shut it down there in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we bless you and we thank you for it. We call it so now in Jesus' name. And the church say, amen. amen. Praise God. God bless you all. See you next time. Amen.